Hi, assalamu alaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 5, the states of matter. And now we're going to focus on the subtopic of 5.3 solid. So in this video, we're going to learn about the properties of the solid. Also, we're going to explain the process of freezing or known as the solidification. And then we're going to look into the melting or known as fusion. Next is sublimation. And the last one is the deposition. Also, we're going to differentiate between the amorphous as well as the crystalline solid. And last but not least, we're going to state the following type of the crystalline solid that we have learned and we're going to give that with appropriate example. So the following types of crystalline solid includes the metallic, ionic, molecular covalent, as well as the giant covalent solid. So without any further ado, let us start. So for the physical properties of the solid, we know that the solid will be arranged closely together in which they just gonna vibrate at their fixed position and this will give rise to its rigid arrangement in which the particle can move very freely and as a result of this it's gonna have a definite shape as well as definite volume and has a strong force between the particle will match will make the solid having a high densities are incompressible okay and in principle the solid liquid and gas states are interconvertible. It means that the solid can be converted into liquid by the process of melting, and the liquid can be converted into gas by the process of the vaporization or boiling. And then the gas can be converted back to a solid by the process of deposition. And similarly to the vice versa, in which solid can be sublimed into gas, gas can be condensed into liquid, and a liquid can be freeze into a solid again. Now we're going to look into some explanation for a melting process. So during melting, when a, sol when a solid substance is being heated, the particle will gain extra energy. And this will cause the particle to move very quickly and energetically. And as a result, it will be able to overcome the attractive forces between the particle. And the particle are now free to move. And as a result, the solid will now melt into a liquid. Meanwhile, for a freezing, it's going to be the vice versa of the melting, in which the liquid is changing its states into the solid. So during the temperature is being lowered, the kinetic energy of the particle will get reduced. And as a result, the particle will move and vibrate at a slower rate. And it's going to be reaching a point in which the intermolecular forces between the particles are strong enough to hold the particle together in a fixed and orderly arrangement and as a result the liquid gonna be freezes into a solid here next we're gonna look into the process of the sublimation so the sublimation is a process by which a substance goes directly from a solid so a solid here which is example here is a dry ice and it goes directly to the gaseous state without passing through the liquid state and it occurs when the molecule on the surface poses enough kinetic energy to overcome the attractive forces and leave the solid phase as a vapor directly without passing through the liquid. Okay, and meanwhile, the deposition is the opposite process of the sublimation. It means that the gas or the vapor state will change to solid without passing through the liquid. And when cooled under certain condition, the vapor will lose its kinetic energy and the vapor molecule will move more slowly and can no longer overcome the attractive forces and they're going to be arranged in the fixed position so that a solid can be formed. So now we're going to look into the different types of solid. So first we have the crystalline solid and next we have the amorphous solid. So for the crystalline solid, it means that the atoms ions or the molecules are arranged in a regular and well-defined arrangement and it was formed via a saturated liquid that were being cooled very very slowly it means that the liquid particle will have enough time in order to arrange it in a order manner and when it is froze it's going to become a crystalline solid meanwhile for the amorphous it's going to have a random arrangement as shown as here so it is very disoriented and it does not have a regular shape. And this 
is due to the formation of the saturated liquid that was being cooled rapidly in order to produce the amorphous solid. And for the crystalline solid, it's going to have a sharp and well-defined melting point. For example, the melting point the melting point is going to be very specific, for example, 175 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, for the amorphous solid, it's going to have a range. Okay, so it is not very specific. For example, it's going to have a range, for example, 220 to 225 degrees Celsius. So the melting of the solid can happen within this region here. And at the example of the amorphous solid is going to be glass, plastic material, as well as the charcoal. And as what you can see, the glass here, when it breaks, it gonna breaks into a different pieces of different sizes, in which that it is due to the random arrangement here. So it's gonna break at this point, at break at this point, break at this point, and causes up it to be a irregular shape when it breaks. Okay, and this is the example for the amorphous solid. Now we're gonna look into the subdivision for the crystalline solid. So first, we're going to have the metallic solid. Second, we're going to have the ionic solid. Third is the molar covalent solid. And the fourth one is the giant covalent solid. So let us look into the metallic solid first. So for the metallic solid, it was arranged in a closely packed structure in which it is composed of the same metal, for example, a metal ion that were linked together by the metallic bond. And here is a drawing of an electron C model in which the electrons are free to move in within this array here and it's going to rise up to the properties of the metallic element. For example, good electrical conductivity as well as a good uh, heat conductivity. And it consists of all the metallic elements which include sodium, magnesium, ferrum and so on. Next, we're going to have the ionic solid. So when we are talking about ionic, we are talking about the formation of the ions which includes the cation and anion. So the example here is the common sort, for example, the NaCl here. So when we have a cation as well as an anion, it's going to have an electrostatic force between them and it's going to uh, be formed via a transfer of electron in which an ionic bond is going to be formed. Next is the molecular covalent solid. So for the molecular covalent solid, it is composed of the molecules that are held together by the intermolecular forces as what you have learned in chapter 4. So we are talking about the van der Waals or the hydrogen bond. So for example here we have our water molecule or when we are talking about ice we're going to have the, the water molecule in the solid state which is the ice. So when in ice the water molecule will arrange themselves in order to maximize the hydrogen bonding. So since we are talking about the intermolecular forces so this is the example of the molecular covalent solid. Last but not least, we're going to have the giant covalent solid. So for the giant covalent solid, it composed of a very large molecule consisting of an atoms linked together by the covalent bond. So the example here includes diamond, graphite, and sulfur dioxide. So for diamond, it consists of a carbon atoms, which is labeled by a orange dot here and it is connected with a covalent bond. So when it is connected extensively from one carbon to another, then we're going to say that it's going to form a giant covalent solid. Similarly, goes to the graphite here. So the carbon, 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 carbon and carbon here are linked together by a covalent bond and then they're going to have a, an extra van der Waal forces in between one graphite layer to another. Okay, and this situation can also be seen in the silicon dioxide, which is used to make quartz. So the silicon oxygen bond are bonded together by a covalent bond. And as a result, a giant covalent solid is going to be formed, which has a very, very high boiling and melting point. Okay, so I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye!